we've had continuous turmoil in um, in treasury space. We're starting to see the spillovers to equities. So I'd actually like to start with a sort of playbook that you've retweeted uh, earlier today with seven steps from your playbook uh, to the global macro environment. Please fill us in on these seven steps, Bob, and why they matter. Yeah, well, I think this this sort of playbook, I, I started talking about it um, when people were starting to buy, were thinking it's time to buy bonds because I think sometime in the future, uh, a recession is going to hit. And I took a step back and I said, look, there's a set of cause effect steps that are going to take us from where we were, say, in the spring of last year, you know, this year to a point in which we get recession and then eventually a point in which inflation is meeting the Fed's mandate and the Fed can <clears throat> significantly ease. And so I, I outlined those steps. The first step at the time, rates need to rise. Um, mm. And we've basically seen that, right? Rates are up more than 150 basis points since uh, in the last six months, uh, particularly on the long end, which hadn't sort of complied with the, the tightening that the Fed had been doing, bringing up the short end. And so we've seen the rate rise. The second step is stocks fall for two basic reasons. One, stocks fall because there's a direct translation effect from uh, from the interest rate rise to discounting of future cash flows, which should bring stock prices down. And two, interest rates rising should lead to weaker economic conditions in the future. We've seen a little bit of that so far. And the reason why that is, is interest rates have risen a fair amount would have implied a, something like a 20-ish percent decline in stock prices if you duration match them. But We've only had a, a modest decline in stocks, about 10% from the peak, depending on exactly how you look at it. Then the next steps are relative, relatively clear, which is that rise in rates and falls and fall in stocks leads to demand slowing. That demand slowing leads to earnings deterioration. That earnings decline leads to weakening of labor markets. That weakening of labor markets leads to lower wage growth. And that lower wage growth eventually leads to inflation coming down towards the Fed's target. And so... If you think about where we are in that cycle, we're sort of halfway in between two. Uh, and it's important that you remain disciplined through this sort of environment because um, you don't want to get ahead of these dynamics on expectations of something that might happen in the future because you have to have these linkages play out to, to get to the final point where we bottom in economic activity and see a renewed reacceleration. 